Today, we're uncovering the most common crimes against coffee. Some are subtle, some are surprising, most are unintentional, but they're happening every day in home kitchens around the world. The first step is admitting we have a problem. So let's all take a deep breath as I dish out some tough love. Hey, it's Josh from Seven Miles Coffee Roasters, coming to you from my lounge room, thanks to Sydney's current COVID lockdown. And speaking of being stuck at home, it's high time we shine a light on some bad coffee habits. We'll start with a problem that's so widespread, it's basically expected. People often ask, how long does coffee last? They take a look at the best before date on the bag, which on many coffees might say six months or 12 months from when it was packed. While it's true that coffee is safe to drink at this point, you're really not gonna get any great results with a coffee that's a year old. With old coffee, typically you'll find that you get very little crema and you'll quite often get a very flat, bland tasting espresso. In tests by our Coffee Science and Education Center, we found that most coffees hit their peak flavor at around 14 days after they're roasted. Yep, two weeks. That's not to say that coffee cannot be tasty after this point, but within a few weeks after the coffee is roasted, coffee starts to steady decline into bleh. We found that the ideal range for coffee varies with the exact packaging method and roast style. But for most coffees, we got a good result in a range from two weeks up to a maximum of eight weeks after the roast date, assuming the coffee was packed oxygen free and kept in its original packaging. Unfortunately, old coffee isn't the only cause of staleness. The second freshness killer is once the coffee is exposed to oxygen. You know, like once you've opened the bag. You can minimize the effects of oxygen by using an airtight container. But ultimately, unless you're using the whole bag within a few days, we found that you're best to store open bags of coffee in an airtight container in the freezer. Yes, yes, I realize some people out there on the internet say the freezer is its own crime against coffee. But the data does suggest otherwise. In our tests, open bag of coffee stored in a freezer performs significantly better in blind taste tests than the same coffee stored in the fridge or at room temperature. The last tip I'll give you about coffee freshness is probably the most important. You really need to get a grinder. Grinding the coffee speeds up the staining process significantly. So buying it pre-ground means that you're already fighting a losing battle on that freshness scale. The second mistake is ignoring the brew ratio. I know that there are some that would rather just freestyle it in the kitchen, but if you want consistently tasty results, a little mass can go a long way. So a brew ratio is simply the ratio of amount of ground coffee to the amount of liquid espresso. This ratio can have a big impact on the flavor of espresso you end up with. So it's definitely worth finding a balance to taste good for the coffee that you're drinking. We usually write this down as a recipe. For example, for this coffee, we recommend using 21 grams of ground coffee to brew 40 grams of liquid espresso in a time of 26 to 30 seconds. If the machine you're using has larger or smaller baskets, you can adjust the weight of the espresso shot at the same ratio. So if you're using 18 grams of ground coffee, I'll reduce that liquid espresso to 34 grams to maintain the same ratio and balance of flavors. But now, if you're a nerd like me, the easiest way to manage this is to use some digital scales. That way, you're always spot on target. But if that's too intense for you, then you can still control the ratio by using some old school methods, like filling and swiping the portafilter or programming the brew volumes on your machine. The third mistake is using random cup sizes. If you drink coffee with milk, like say a flat white, a latte, or a cappuccino, then the amount of milk you add to the espresso will have a big impact on the taste of the finished product. You'll notice that most specialty cafes use smaller cup sizes than the cups you may have lying around at home. These sizes are selected to give you an ideal balance of espresso and milk when filled to the top. The ideal ratio varies a little depending on how dark the coffee is roasted or how the flavor plays with milk but a good rule of thumb is that you generally want no more than around 160 to 180 grams of milk per shot of espresso. So for a double espresso, try to find a cup that's no larger than 300 to 350 mils. 
Yes, I know you love that Jumbo World's best dad mug you got for Father's Day, but maybe save it for the hot chocolate because we can never have enough of that. Mistake number four is ignoring water quality. The water you use to brew your coffee can affect the flavor in two ways. The first, it can taint the flavor of the coffee. If you're using plain old tap water, you'll most likely be getting chlorine and metallic taste from the pipes in your house. A simple carbon filter will generally get rid of most of these, and so it's a real simple way of improving the flavor of your coffee straight out of the gate. The second way that water affects the taste of coffee is a little more technical. The chemistry of water itself affects the balance of flavors that you can extract from the coffee. Dissolved minerals like magnesium and calcium, as well as the acidity of water, all have an effect on the way that the coffee tastes. I won't go into the details now, but if you're interested in how this works, I'll link up to a more technical video up here if you want to nerd out on some water for coffee. For now, I suggest just starting out with a basic water filter to get rid of those flavor taints. Speaking of ingredients that can turn a good coffee bad, our next mistake is milk abuse. The most common example is burning the milk. If you're making a cappuccino, a latte, or a flat white, then it's a mistake to heat the milk to the same temperature as the coffee. I know, I know, some people like their flat white to be piping hot but milk-based coffees like these just don't taste right at high temperatures. Most milks are at their best when they're heated up to around 65 degrees Celsius to around 70 degrees Celsius. Beyond this point, milk will start to taste cooked, and that is less sweet with a little bit more of an eggy aroma. The higher temperatures also make it harder to get silky milk texture, which we'll get to in a second. Getting the right temperature is pretty simple. You can either use our old fashioned touch temperature method that many baristas use and develop over their career. Or you can use a milk thermometer, like these stickers that change color when the milk hits the right temperature. The texture of the milk also has an effect on flavor. If you eject too much air into the milk, you'll end up with fluffy peaks of milk foam that quickly separate out into layers that float around on the top of the cup. But these larger bubbles of milk foam tend to accentuate the bitter notes of the coffee whereas a more silky, creamier milk texture will blend with the espresso and give a bit more of a balanced flavor. Of course, some people prefer reenacting the final moments of the Titanic on their cappuccino, so each to their own, I guess. Our final mistake is a hidden menace, the thing that no one wants to talk about, dirty equipment. Most of us are pretty good at keeping the outside of our shiny new espresso machine clean, but we do tend to let the team down when it comes to parts we can't see. After we make a few shots of espresso, the coffee oils coat the surfaces in the group head, the portafilter, and the basket. This residue bakes on, creating all manner of metallic, rancid, and generally unpleasant flavors and aromas. I mean, just take out that basket and take a sniff. That's what's waiting for your next coffee. At the risk of sounding like a late night infomercial, the solution is pretty simple. Just get some espresso cleaner. These cleaners are designed to remove this coffee residue, and a jar of this stuff will last you a really long time, keeping your home coffee equipment free from those dank coffee vibes. Most manual home espresso machines come with a blind filter or a cleaning disc that you use to back flush the group head. Use this with a small amount of espresso cleaner and flush it back through the group a few times. If it's really nasty, you might need to leave it to soak for just a few minutes. Once that's done, empty out the dirty water and flush it through a few more times with plain water to remove any of the residue from the espresso cleaner. Next, separate the portafilter and the basket and soak them in hot water with a scoop of espresso cleaner. After five minutes, you can give them a quick scrub, a rinse, and you're ready to get back to making good coffee that doesn't taste like an ashtray. And with that, I wish you the best of brews at home. Till next time, stay exceptionally stoked.